A lot has happened to you uh, in that in that short amount of time since the shooting happened. How how is everything going for you? Uh, I mean, there's no really way to properly recover, but time will heal. That's the only proper medication for it, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just still trying to like deal with reality here, but the only proper solution to this is just fighting for a change and making sure you get legislation passed. And I'm not going to lose sight of that. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like with all the, you know, hysteria that's happened after this, you know, horrible tragedy and what's happened with a lot of your classmates, you know, um, a lot of what uh, has actually happened during that time kind of got lost. Could you run us through, you know, part of what happened that day and, you know, if you feel comfortable with it, just kind of what happened? Uh, sure. So I was in my fourth period class and the fire alarm bell rang and previously in the day, we had a fire alarm drill, so I didn't think it was a big deal. I thought it was just someone just accidentally pulled the alarm. So I was try I was walking out slowly. I didn't think it was a big deal. I was like, could I? St I asked my teacher if I could stay inside. Um, he said no. We had to leave. So the second, so, so I walk out. So I was walking outside to the door, about to reach the door, and on the announcement, my vice principal goes and he says everyone must evacuate immediately. So we rush outside, and outside I hear two pops. Now, I didn't realize what was going on at that time, so I started slowly walking back to my classroom. Um, apparently, what happened was exactly when I was outside in the hallway, there was an announcement in the speakers, and it told everyone there's an active shooter on campus. Now, the thing is that I, when, if I'm in the hallway, I wasn't able to hear because there's no speakers set up. And even more so after all this occurred, they still didn't add speaker systems to the hallway outside, which, which really angered me because, look, w when I'm looking at it, we have an issue at our school system that could easily be solved, and it's not being solved. Um, so then I ran back inside to, to my classroom. Girls were, everyone was hysteric, and then he closed the door on me. Um, I talked to him after. The, end, the reason was he was just following procedure. I mean, I understood what he did, and then girls were crying and, and cursing for him to open the door, and he wouldn't. So we quickly ran into another room, um, a, a teacher close by, and we hid there. And then we had no idea what was going on, so I just decided the best thing was to, to sit in the closet. So we piled in, we, we stuffed everyone into the closet, as many people as possible. And we just sat there and we got updates for about two hours until SWAT took us out about 4.40. Um, we then walked outside. We had to put our hands on each other's backs and then walk in a single file line. I had to leave all my stuff at school. I was only able to take my phone. And then I just walked over to the nearby park and uh, my dad came to pick me up. Jeez, man. I can't, I can't even begin to imagine how that must have felt. And I'm so sorry that all that had to happen. You know, It's not, it's not that. It's just that what angers me more is that there was an issue with the school system where I wasn't able to understand what was going on so it easily could have the, what even more so what I, I was talking to a close friend of mine Patrick Petty he told me when the shooter came on campus he came from like the front gates um, on the right of the front gates so that it, I honestly could have been one of those shot and injured or killed had the shooter decided to take a left versus a right yeah. and what angers me even more is when there was a shooter on campus and the announcement was made it was a failure of the system because there was no speakers outside, and even more so, no one is solving the issue now. Even there's all this media attention, the small things that can actually save a life and that are actually doable by the school system, which don't need any legislation, aren't being done. Well, you were at this school, so you know what happened during the shooting. What else could have been done to stop this shooting, you think? Well, I mean, first of all, even before someone comes on campus preparing to make an attack, there are warning signs, and every single shooting, the shooter always gives himself away before it occurs. And this one, it was on it was on YouTube, it was on Instagram. And even more so, the police and the school and the FBI and the Child Protective Services knew about this. And they did absolutely nothing for one very specific reason. Because they're getting money from the federal government for how clean their record looks like. That's what it comes down to. The less people they arrest, the cleaner the record is, the more money they get federally. And that's what the issue is. The police aren't doing their job because they're incentivized not to. And even more so, when someone arrived on campus, we had the proper security, okay, and, and seemingly the proper security to stop them, but, but they, they didn't, didn't do anything. They didn't do absolutely anything. And and I talked to, to Andrew Pollack, and I, I cried after he told me this. He told me that his daughter would have been safe if, 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 if the armed guard went to the third floor. Because what happened was, the only reason the shooting stopped was because Nick's gun jammed. That was the only reason. And that had the police actually gone upstairs and stopped the shooter, his daughter would have been saved because she was locked outside of a classroom.
So had the police done their job after the first seconds of confusion, his daughter would have been alive and so would five others. Now what we that, have... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, now what I was going to say is now that we have, you know, we have this march for our lives and everything, I actually did a video of that uh, shoot, uh, interviewing the students and all the other people who are there. And, you know, a lot of these things are not including you on. Um, they don't invite you to speak. They don't put you on the time cover. Why do you think that is? Well, look, that's irrelevant. Forget about me. What about Patrick Petty, who lost his sister? That's that's truly the heartbreaking thing here. They they forcibly ignored. OK, I'm going to say forcibly ignored. Patrick Petty's request to speak on, on the basis that he has some pro Second Amendment stances, which is absolutely disgusting. Forget about me. I, I understand that they, they they didn't just reach out to me, they didn't ask me, that's that's okay, that's understandable in some respect. But to not allow the brother of a victim to speak is absolutely disgusting. And then and then the reasoning was that for, for Hunter Pollock, who's older than eighteen, whose sister was shot was killed, Meadow Pollock, the reasoning was that he was over than eighteen, which is okay, that's your that's your guidelines. How come Patrick Petty wasn't able to talk? And look, at the end of the day, I understand why I'm being excluded, but the people who truly have, who should be given all the spotlight, aren't being. And yeah. that's what's being. Yeah, exactly. Well, we know the agenda, you know, that they're pushing, the left-wing agenda with that. I'm, uh, I'm still waiting for your debate with David Hogg. When is that going to happen? Whenever he wants to, man. Whenever <laughs> anyone wants to debate. I mean, yeah. you know, it was, you know, it was actually pretty interesting. So, um, we're, today we went to the auditorium to sign up AP forms, and the person who was supposed to be sitting next to me was Kasky, but mm -hmm. he wasn't there that day. It would have been really fun. Yeah, well, this is what I was saying. I was talking with some other people before this, you know, and I thought it'd be interesting to ask you if you were to, you know, do you see David Hogg and uh, some of these other people on campus when you're going uh, to school now? I mean, I've, I've seen some of the, the less prominent members on campus definitely a bit. I've spoken to Alfonso. Uh, I tried to talk to him and explain to him why an assault rifle ban is, is moronic and it simply won't work. Um, I see them. I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen Hogg, Kasky, or Emma on campus. Yeah. But what I do get is a lot of stare downs, which is fun. Yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. Um, so I know that these other students, they're planning, you know, a lot of other things, um, trying to get students, you know, to protest guns, get more gun control things like that, and we were talking about this before, on Friday, you're going to be doing something on Facebook, right? Oh yeah, it's going to be huge. Yeah, what, is, it, what is that about? Uh, so basically, here's what it is. And for kids who don't want to walk out, here's a reason why not to walk out. The walkout will accomplish absolutely nothing. So here's what we did. To commemorate the 19th anniversary of the Columbine High School shooting, here's what we did. We made a live stream with some of the most prominent members to discuss ways to save lives without infringing on the Second Amendment and discuss the importance of mental health. Uh, it truly comes down to what can we solve definitively today and how do we educate the public on that. I can tell you I got um, Sebastian Gorka to speak, Charlie Kirk to speak, uh, Anthony Scaramucci to speak, so many prominent figures. The end goal here is not to push a partisan solution, it's to push solutions that actually work, whether they're Democrat or Republican. I mean. And to make sure we don't infringe on the Second Amendment, because at the end of the day, the Second Amendment is what protects every other amendment. And it starts by taking away the rights of individual gun owners. And I think informing the public is extremely important to where a walkout will accomplish absolutely nothing but gain clicks for CNN and MSNBC. Yeah. I mean, you have hashtag, you had hashtag repeal the second trending on Twitter. I mean, that's just insane to me that these people are actually pushing for that, that people want to desecrate the Constitution. I mean, so I think, you know, doing that Facebook Live and talking... Constitution is one of the most beautiful literary, it's one of the beautiful, most beautiful legislative pieces. They don't understand yeah. that. They've lost that. They've lost that. The left has completely well, lost that. Well, I think that, that and... sometimes come with, like, not having respect for your elders and viewing elders as ignorant. I mean, the Founding Fathers have such a grasp perspective on the future of America that they were able to predict what would possibly occur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, people nowadays have lost traditional values. At the March for Our Lives, I mean, you saw that there. Um, so... Yeah, it's crazy what's going on. I'm just hoping that we can, you know, help people stop being so misinformed because in my opinion, I think it's really just misinformation that these people are getting. It's not even their fault. It's just, you know, the main media and um, their professors at schools and, and high schools as well telling them the wrong that. things. Yeah, tell exactly me. That. The, entire, the entire youth um, ideology is from like the left stems from, from ignorance. It's truly that because I truly think that if you look into the facts and the statistics, at all points for the conservative point of view. Mm -hmm. I was speaking with um, with a young and rising teen, 
was very prominent. And I, I mean, I explained to him the stance of abortion, and and in the beginning, I mean, he, he, it stemmed from ignorance. But after a while of presenting him the facts, he was like, "Yo, Kyle, wow, I didn't, I didn't actually, wow, you're right. This, some, there's some issues with abortion. I mean, some, sometimes at some stages shouldn't be legal. I, I mean, I, what I did was I basically shifted his perspective by by showing him reality and facts. And I think that's one of the greatest things. And even more so today in history class, we were talking about. I believe elections, and someone brought up um, how in D.C. right now they, they lowered the age to vote to 16. And to me, it was somewhat concerning when this occurred was because a lot of the youth, they're very intelligent, but they're ignorant and they don't apply themselves, you know? I mean, I, I have faith. I have faith in the youth. I think that I really do. But I, at, at the end of the day, it's just a lot of, it, a lot of liberal perspectives come from peer pressure. And I truly believe that if you look at the facts, they all point to the conservative point of view. Specifically, I mean, 100% in the gun control debate, it's, all the facts are entirely on the Second Amendment side. Oh, yeah, they are. I mean, conservatives are just playing catch-up at this point, you know, where we have to basically bring people back from being misinformed for so long. Uh, it's not these people's faults. You know, I talk to a lot of people. It's not that they uh, disagree with conservative ideas. They've just, they've literally never even heard one. They didn't even know that there were other stances that you could take. Um, and I think that you're doing great work, you know, helping to inform people, and, you know, really being strong with all the other students on your campus being so against the Second Amendment. So we want to thank you, thank uh, you. Kyle, for joining us today and talking to us about this. Um, I and, pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is Will Witt with PragerU. Thank you, everybody, for watching.